Hello, all you wonderful people. Today, I'm out in Kyoto. And when you think of Kyoto, you might think of the history of Kyoto. The, the fact that this used to be the capital of Japan. And that's a very, very difficult history. But you probably think of shrines. You probably think of history. So you probably don't think of like derelict looking buildings and disgusting roads. Like you think of beautiful trees. Also, you don't think of schmugs like this guy right here. Look at him. Man, this does not look as pretty as you think of Kyoto. It kind of looks like a dump. But the headquarters of one of the biggest video game companies is right here in an obscure part of Kyoto. That company is Nintendo. You may have heard of it. So today, let's go see the house that Mario built. Yahoo! So why is Nintendo headquartered in Kyoto? Well, in the 1800s, Nintendo actually started their company building playing cards, which became very, very popular. Man, I look like a bum! And that company happened to be started out here in Kyoto. And then eventually they got into the game market. So the original location is about 30 minutes away from where we are right now. But currently we're looking for the corporate headquarters where Shigeru Miyamoto goes to work. The guy who created Mario and a lot of famous Nintendo characters. Hey Toko, mm. did you know that Shigeru Miyamoto is so important to the company, he's not allowed to take a bike to work? You told me on the train the other day. Well, now you know. Toko? Yes? I don't think we're going to find this building. No, Tucker, that, that can't be it. <laughs> that can't be it. I mean, Nintendo's a company that's doing the Universal theme park stuff. They're gonna have something cool outside of it, right? <laughs> Welcome to Japan. What? There's no way that's Nintendo. Uh, see, I told you this wasn't the headquarters. This is the R&D building. But that doesn't deny that the headquarters looks about the same. Nice people going to work. Maybe getting ready on the next Nintendo device. Man, as a child, I'd imagine that the Nintendo place would be a lot of fun, but it's it's kind of kind of boring. And this is the research and development place, so it's it's just it's corporate. It feels like a giant corporation, but it's cool to be here. Imagine Super Mario is in there waiting to get a mushroom. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, but they don't want anyone that's not working here in this building. The, the building itself reminds me of something you might see at Google, except it's not as people friendly. Like at Google headquarters, they have like a whole river and workout places and places that you can go chill out while you're working. But Nintendo, it's all about work, but that's also Japanese life. Man, this place is pretty cool though. It's really Japanese. It's really non-flamboyant. And... If you see the cars, there's eight like Volvos and Mercedes, just like a Daihatsu and a Subaru. It's just it's so Japanese, man. Though the research and development building looks pretty cool, I want to see that main headquarters that's being blocked by this residential housing area. Imagine what it would look like if this wasn't here. You'd be able to see the building and see exactly what I'm talking about. The people watching this right now, Toko, wouldn't have to imagine anything at all. Okay, maybe that residential housing area is actually part of the main Nintendo HQ. So... Don't have to guess anymore. I've heard a lot of stories about this place, about how all these people like stay overnight, stay for, for days on end, trying to complete a game on time, especially in the 80s. There's a reason there's gonna be a theme park area dedicated to Nintendo, because of their hard work. Well, it's cool that the Nintendo company's right here and their wall actually matches the design of their building. So they're aesthetically pleasing, but next to nothing when it comes to theming. Wow, the HQ for Nintendo looks pretty much like any average building. What? It's a Saturday. Oh, well it still looks like an average building. The Nintendo uh, Research Development Place, they were actually working on stuff, but here there looks like the corporation has taken a break. You'd think that the Nintendo HQ would be a really, really big tourist mecca, but Toko, there ain't no one out here. Except for you, me, and the snow that's gathering on your head. And a Porsche dealership. Oh yeah, and there's a Porsche dealership. So if you want to spend your Nintendo money, you can go spend it right there. You know, it's funny how people go out to look for something. They go out to see something. And they call that a pilgrimage. I guess this will be a nerd grimage. Now you think Nintendo, a company that's going to represent Japan in the 2020 Olympics, you know, you think they might have like a visitor center or something? But no, this is office. This is what it is. There's no museum just because, hey, 
They got business to do. Those guys on the bus right there, passing right by the Nintendo HQ. They probably don't even know. Do you guys have a favorite Nintendo game? If you do, leave a comment down below. I can tell you that a lot of my childhood was dedicated to playing the games that this company produced. And uh, thank you for that. Thank you for my childhood. Now I'm in Japan. It's, that's one of the cool things about living out in Japan because I can just say, hey, today I feel like going to the Nintendo HQ. And you know, if I lived in Tokyo, I'd have to take a whole train out here. It would take a whole day. Instead, I live in Osaka and it takes, what, less than an hour. Kanzai is better than Tokyo, just let you guys know. All right, let's wave goodbye to the Nintendo HQ and go see the original place where the Nintendo company started when they were only making card games. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering why I'm not walking in there, there's a guard station right there and they are not gonna let me in. It's hard to see, but if you look all the way down there, you'll see a red Tori. That's Fushimi Inari on that hill right over there. So Nintendo Corporation isn't too far from that. Well, you can't see it now, but if it was there, you'd see it, James Dean. Ooh, got a little cold, but boy, I think this might be the coolest design for a building I've ever seen in my life. I don't know. Join us. You know all of the buildings that I've seen painted in Japan, which aren't very many actually, that's one of the more interesting ones. In the middle of nowhere here. Whoa, look at this derelict shrine here. It's, whoa, it's, I don't know how long this thing has been here, but it looks pretty old. This reminds me of like the phantom phone booth that keeps on ringing, you know, if he would come out and see it and everything. But it's just like this derelict religious shrine. Kyoto. There's Kyoto Tower. Toko has found a little park and he wants to instigate a challenge with me. That I do more push-ups than him for 100 yen. Great. We're at looking for Nintendo. Might as well make it a challenge, right? Here we go. Three, two, one. No, no, no. I'm going to fall. I'm going to hurt myself. <laughs> nah, you win. 100 yen is yours. I, 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 just, I just saw myself crashing and eating. Uh, hold on. Let me get down before you get your money. No, no, no. What the hell? 100 yen, little man. Put that s in my hand. If you don't, you owe me, owe me, owe me, owe me, owe me. Jungle love, jungle love. Oh, we, oh, we, oh. After we were getting ready to go from the pull-up contest, I look in the window over here and I see this creepy freaking doll looking right at me. I almost shat myself. Oh, my goodness. That's a scary little guy. You know, Togo, this is Nintendo country, but look out, Namco Bandai's here. Pac-Man has made an appearance here at this park. Well, if you don't believe me that it's cold, you can see the snow on the top of that mountain there. It's a freezing. Here's a TV that's just being thrown out. Doesn't look too new. Um, a lot of people have to pay to remove their trash in Japan, so they pay a company to do it. It's usually, yeah, kusa. And they're like, yeah, we'll get rid of it for you, and they'll just throw it in the river. Well, you wouldn't expect the original placement for Nintendo to just be in some residential area, but it is. Yeah, dude, the buildings look really add up. <laughs> you know what? What? If I hang out with you enough, I don't think I would be good at acting. You think you're gonna be good at acting? I don't know. I think your acting skills are pretty subpar. <laughs> so just down this, this road, and then right to the left, right here, this is the former place where they created the Nintendo playing cards. This is the building that Nintendo spawned from. And here's the sign that proves that Nintendo was here. I'm just kidding. There's one in English right over here. Wow, it's really interesting to think that Nintendo spawned from a card playing company and this is the origin point, the point of origin for Nintendo. Mario, everything came from this place. And the building itself is incredibly ornate. Seriously, this building looks like something that would be a facade for like a ride or something. But it's where they make cards. And literally, just a fun fact for you, this is a Trump. Trump means playing cards in Japanese. Oh, if anyone comes up to you and says Trump, they must want to play cards with you. Like, I get that you want to have a good facade showing off that you are a proud company, but what, what's going on here? 
<laughs> this, did they open these up for the people down below? They're like, I've been down here making cards for the last eight years. Someone open these windows. It's, it's the kid, it's the hostage situation. They're, they're trying to break out right now. They're across the street, they're digging under the ground. And if you were to say, well, that doesn't seem like that big of a building. Well, if you look all the way in the back here, you see the actual manufacturing offices of the company. Seeing what started Nintendo, you can kind of understand now why they are in Kyoto still to remember their heritage. Isn't that right, Toko? And if you look at this building, it's got, and if you look at like Nintendo games, you know, it look, feels like a, something that comes out of a Nintendo game, like a Charlie in a Chocolate Factory style. You know, I went to Gene Wilder's shooting location for Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory, and you know what? You are kind of right. I could do the loop flip here that Willy Wonka does, but. It wouldn't be the same thing. I'd have to do the, the jump. Level up. Looking at the Nintendo building, the one thing I'd say that they're missing out on an opportunity is a tour. Wouldn't you like to know like the history, the yeah. backstory about Nintendo, where they came from? You know, we all have our humble beginnings from card company makers to extremely profitable businesses. Like literally, Nintendo is representing Japan in the 2020 Olympics. When Shinzo Abe showed up for the 2016 change of changing of the guard, he came out as Mario. Because you know, this is not only important for the Nintendo company, but important to Japan as well. If you want to go inside, you can come and try to take a peek, but there's a cloth that separates you from the magic that's inside. Now, as a kid, I had a Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, and that's, that's where I stopped on the Nintendos, but believe me, finding the birthplace of the Nintendo company is pretty amazing. But you know, I'm in Kyoto. I want to see something more than just a technology company or a card playing company. So why not go see something that's iconic to Kyoto? Toko, are you ready for a walk? Yep. Let's go. You're going to have to find out what that is in part two.